Does alcohol affect estrogen dominance? Let's find out. Dealing with estrogen dominance is really tough, but it doesn't have to be that hard if you understand how your hormones work. In my hormone support group, we talk about how what you consume affects your estrogen dominance, which is free to join, by the way, and I'll put the link down below. So how does alcohol affect estrogen dominance? Now, 50% of women over the age of 35 are estrogen dominant, and you may be estrogen dominant if you have very heavy periods, fibroids, or fibrocystic breast condition, or if you're perimenopausal, or have polycystic ovary syndrome, and alcohol can affect your estrogen dominance. But before we talk about how it affects you, you need to understand how estrogen affects you. Estrogen dominance means your estrogen levels are out of balance with progesterone. In a normal, healthy menstrual cycle, your body makes 10 to 50 times more progesterone than estrogen. I like to call progesterone the gardener and estrogen the fertilizer. Estrogen is a growth factor, fertilizing your uterus, your breasts, your skin, your hair, your nails, your eyes, all the linings of your internal organs, keeping them healthy. But estrogen does not know the difference between the flowers and the weeds, so it can also stimulate growth of abnormal cells like cancer. Now that's where progesterone comes in. Like a conscious gardener, progesterone knows the difference between the flowers and the weeds. Progesterone stimulates the P54 gene that limits cell replication to help eradicate cancerous growth. That's why you need so much more progesterone than estrogen. When you're under stress, progesterone gets used by your adrenals to make cortisol. And when you're not ovulating regularly, say you're perimenopausal or you have polycystic ovary syndrome, then you don't make enough progesterone and you become estrogen dominant. Alcohol affects estrogen dominance by affecting estrogen metabolism, and not in a good way. Here's the deal. You have three different types of estrogen, estradiol, estrone, and estriol. Estradiol is the most potent, but it's short acting, so enzymes in your fat cells convert it into estrone. And there are three types of estrone your body makes, and they're not created equally. I like to call them the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good 2-hydroxyl estrone, which is protective and is the most dominant long-acting estrogen in young, healthy women. The bad 4-hydroxyl estrone, which is carcinogenic and thankfully not dominant unless you're taking synthetic hormone replacement, especially Premarin. And the ugly 16-hydroxyl estrone, which is inflammatory and becomes the more dominant estrone as you age. Now, the more 16-hydroxyl estrone your body makes, the more likely you will experience inflammatory effects of estrogen, including fibrocystic breast condition, uterine fibroids, heavy painful periods, and melasma, the dark patches on your face. Now, here's where alcohol comes in. Alcohol increases the conversion of 16-hydroxyl estrone. The more you drink, the more inflammatory 16-hydroxyl estrone you'll make. A low or moderate amount of alcohol, for women that means no more than one glass of wine, one beer, or one ounce of hard alcohol daily. That does not increase 16-hydroxyl estrone conversion unless you're obese or sedentary or exposed to xenoestrogens like plastics, pesticides, and certain drugs like cimetidine. The good news is, is that most of the things that affect inflammatory estrone conversion are under your control getting your weight within 15% of ideal, meaning under 30% body fat, will help protect you. Keeping active, exercise regularly, and try not to sit for more than a few hours a day. And you're already near your ideal weight and active. Limiting your alcohol intake to no more than one serving daily can help reduce inflammatory estrogen. Now, estrogen dominance may be common and is affected by alcohol consumption, but fortunately it's controllable. Besides alcohol, certain foods can increase estrogen dominance. Now, if you're struggling with estrogen dominance, please consider supporting your hypothalamus. You'll learn more about how in our hormone reboot training, where you'll also learn about how to safely metabolize your estrogen so you're less likely to be estrogen dominant. For more great women's health tips, check out what I've got for you in the next video.